Hello, all my friends. Hello. Hello. <coughs> my goodness, what happened? Good? <coughs> my, my voice is really weird. <laughs> we can leave this part in. Hello, all my friends. Hello. Hello, all my friends. Hello. I'm feeling real silly, so let's start the show. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Boo doo, boo doo, boo doo, boo doo, boo 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 boo. Oh, my voice went really weird there for a minute. Hello, my friends. Hello. Hello, my friends. Hello. My voice is silly and I'm silly too. Biddy loop boop loop boop 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 boop. When you edit it, you can leave that part in. Because it's okay to make mistakes. Hmm? Welcome to Tazzy Read Stuff, where I, Tazzy, read stuff. All kinds of stuff. Like that right there. What which finger is this? This one? This one? This one? This one? Where Tazzy. Do you see that? Tazzy. <laughs> read stuff. I got lots of stuff. We're reading lots of Zeus. We got a uh, one more. We got a Zeus book to read today. Is book number uh, what book number is it? Nine oh three. What nine oh three? That's almost as close to that TV show nine oh two one oh. We have a long way to go for that one. I'm just gonna tight right there. And Miss Christie's here. Say hi, Miss Christie. There we go. Uh, Leslie, it's okay. So Leslie Candy says she's here. So that means that Justin is here. Hello, Justin. And uh, Wendy said, "LOL." Obviously, you are you. Obviously, you moved the cat in the hat. You did, because this is what happened. I fell asleep on the couch, and uh, I wanted to get up, and then Cosmo was. Um, can you see that? Okay, or like that? I guess maybe. I'll have to show closer to this camera too. So Cosmo was leaning against my leg, and every time I went to move, he cuddled in more. And so I was moving, and then I had to reach down and hold him because he was hanging off the couch. He was going to fall. He was out too. He was doing one of these. Uh, uh, uh. Kitty snores. Oh, Barb is here. Hello, Barb. Jen. Hello, Jen and the kids. And Albert is here, which means that Miss Yasminka is here. Hello, Miss Yasminka. Instead of a joke, try asking Suri for a tongue twister. Oh, there's a good idea. Let's try that. Hey, Suri, do you know any tongue twisters? Nope. <laughs> I have to turn it on first. Suri, do you know any tongue twisters? Envision Eve eagerly eating elegant Easter eggs. Envision Eve eagerly eating elegant Easter eggs. So we'll try two of these. That's a good one. Suri, do you know another tongue twister? Fresh fried fish. Fish fried fresh. Fish fresh fried. Fried fish fresh. Oh, I just had an idea. Do you hear that? Uh, I, uh, you got erased before uh, we could do that. <laughs> there we go. Fish fried fish. Fresh fried fish, fish fried fresh, French fried fr fricassee, fried fl lighting, fl lightning bugs. How much wood could you could a wood chuck chuck a wood chuck could chuck wood? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where the pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? The blue bug bled blue black blood, and the blue black blood. Bug bled blue. I can't even do it without even that. This one too. The the hardest one for a while was the sixth sheik's sixth sheep is sick. That's a pretty tough one. That's it. Yeah. Can I have a puppy? No. Ah, uh, it's my favorite tongue twister. <laughs> okay, one more, one more from Surrey. Surrey, tell me a tongue twister. You silenced it already. Yeah. Sixty sick, sixty, sixty sickly skeletons. How do you know they're sickly? They're already like nothing but bones. So welcome. That's it. So today, uh, good day. I uh, we um, this is what I did. This is what I did. I'll show you what I did. Everybody already knows what you did. You took a nap with the cat. That's what you did. I didn't Tessie. know I'm taking a nap with the Everybody's cat. seen the picture. I uh, I made that. Can you see that? That's what we're going to have for supper after. In case it's too hard to see, maybe people you should tell people what that is. It's a puppy. 
It's not a puppy. Try it is. Uh, your camera might make oh, maybe. They're like, oh, I can do it bigger. There you go. Can you see what that is now? It's chickens. Chickens! We did chickens. <laughs> On the smoker. Little smoker action there. Howdy, folks. Brendan McDonald's here. Brendan McDonald. Hey, good to see you. Anyways, let's read a book, Miss Christy. Stop. The, well, how was your day, Miss Christy? It's okay. Did you bring down those things to show? I did not. Oh, Miss Christy came, came up with a cool design for some stuff. Pretty neat. Am I blurry? Are my eyes blurry. Am I a little blurry? On there, do I look blurry? I don't know. Your <laughs> audience will have to tell you. Do I look blurry to anybody? <laughs> I literally just woke up. I fell asleep and I have, oh, I got sleeps in my eyes. Nope, now I'm awake. I take the sleep out. Talking about that, sleep book. Dr. Zeus' sleep book. Dr. Zeus' sleep book. This book belongs, this book is to be read in bed. Oh, oh we're going to have to read it here. Dr. Zeus' sleep book. The news just came in from the county of Keck. I need my Zeus reading glasses. Not blurry. Okay, good. Thank you. I was worried. Because sometimes when we put stuff close to the camera, it makes it blurry. Now, now you're blurry. I can't read them. Here we go. The news just came in from the county of Keck, where a very small bug by the name of Van Vleck is yawning so wide you, look la you can look down his neck. This may not seem important, I know, but it is. I'm bothering to tell you so. A yawn is quite catching, you see, like a cough. It takes you one yawn to start the other yawns off. Now the news has come that some of the friends of Van Flex are yawning so wide you can look down their necks. Uh-oh. Mm. This Just is why you have to yawn. read it in bed. That's right. At this moment right now, under the seven more noses, great yawns are in blossom. They're like blooming like they're blooming like roses. That's a lot of yawns on that page. Yeah. How many people are like yawning out there right now? Yeah. Oh. See, I believe William, are you yawning? I yawn there. I just saw a picture of yawning on yawning. <laughs> they could be yawning hither and yawn. The yawn of that one little bug is spreading. According to the latest reports, it's heading across the wide fields through sleepy night air, across the whole country toward every which where. And the people are gradually starting to say, I feel rather drowsy. I've had quite a day. Hello, Samuel and William. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba Boom. Yawn. Creatures are starting to think about rest. Two biffer bomb birds are now building their nest. They do it each night, and quite I and quite often I wonder how they would do the job. How they do this big job without a blunder. But that is their problem, not yours and not mine. The point is, they're going to bed, and that is just fine. I don't know if I'd want to, like, you know when you're getting ready to go to bed and you're starting to feel sleepy? I don't know no. if I'd want a job like that right before I went to bed. Well, you know, as you say, make your bed. Yeah, usually you do that oh. in the morning. So I was at Ashley's uh, 204 Comics today, and Ashley goes, "What's? why is all that stuff falling out of the tree over there? And it wasn't, um, it wasn't, uh, um, falling out of the tree. The bird was pulling stuff and then dropping it on the ground and picking these giant pieces of stuff up and flying it up to make a nest in his light by his shop. That's pretty cool. How is it since our meeting? Oh, it's been good. Yes. How has it been since our meeting? I haven't seen any spiders. No, no spiders. Yeah. Spider free. Except for one guy who was climbing on our wall. Like, what are you doing? He went, and he was gone. <laughs> Sleep thoughts are spreading throughout the whole land. The time for night brushing of teeth is at hand. Yes, Minka? You have to brush your teeth later. Up at Hergheimer Falls, the great river rushes and crashes down crags and Greg guide in great gargling gushes. Hergheimer sisters are using their brushes. There falls their 
just grand for toothbrushing beneath if you happen to be up that way with your teeth. That's kind of cool. That would be quite the place to brush your teeth. It'd be cool. Yeah. Pretty fantastic, no to be honest. The news just came from Castle of Krupp. The lights are all out and the drawbridge is up. The old drawbridge the, the old drawbridge drawer said with a yawn, My drawbridge is yawn. It'll stay that way till dawn. Till the milkman delivers the milk around dawn. I'm going to bed now, so nobody better come around here with a special delivery letter. I can't believe I'm yawning because people are yawning on the page. <laughs> Maybe we should have the Tazzy Reed stuff all awake book. The number of sleepers is steadily growing. Bed is where more and more people are going. The Culpepper Springs in the Stilt Walker's Hall. The Stilt Walker stilts are stacked onto the wall. The Stilt Walker walkers have called it a day. They're all tuckered out and are snoozing away. It's very big news. It's important you know. And that's why I'm bothering to tell you this so. You know, I personally wouldn't stack them like that just in case one falls in the middle of the Maybe they're holes. One. Maybe there are holes in the ground that hold them like that. Maybe. Perhaps. Maybe. Yeah. Way out west in the town of Merced, the Hinklehorn Honking Club just went to bed. Every horn has been highly hung on a hook for the night in its own private Hinkle nor Hinklehorn Nook. All this long. I think what I'm going to do is just get those it tongue twisters at the beginning. It was the tongue twisters at the beginning, and I think my my mouth is asleep. Let's see if I wake it up. All this long happy day, they've been honking about, and the Hinklehorn honkers have honked themselves out. But they'll wake up quite fresh in the morning, and then they'll start right in Hinklehorn honking again. There you go. All this long happy day. They've been honking about. The Hinklehorn honkers are honk themselves out, but they'll wake up quite fresh in the morning, and then they'll start right in Hinklehorning again. Honk honking. Honk honking. Oh, look at this picture. Oh, did I show a picture? You did not. I forgot to show the picture. I have one job. Well. Well, two. Everywhere. Creatures are falling asleep. The collapsible frink has just collapsed in a heap. And by adding the frink to the others before, you'll be able to give you the who's asleep score. Right now, 40,404 creatures are happily deep in slumber. I think you'll agree. That's a whopping fine number. So you just needed a little bit of water in my that's mouth. A, then. a lot of limbs and neck. Yeah. It's the collapsible frink. Counting up sleepers, that's just how we do it. Uh, just how we do it, it's quite simple. There's nothing much to it. We find out how many, we learn the amount. By the auto tally, a tally, oh count. On the mountain halfway between Reno and Rome, we have a machine in a plexiglass dome which listens and looks at everybody's home. And whenever it sees a sleeper go flop, it jiggles and lets the bib, bib go ball drop. Our chap count those balls as they plop in a cup, plump in a cup, and that's how we know who's down and who's up. That's quite the device. That is quite the device. He's like, okay, one, two, three, forty thousand, four thousand, four thousand and four. Do you talk in your sleep? Pardon me. Do you talk in your sleep? It's a wonderful sport. I have news from this sport to report. The world champion sleep talkers, Joe and Mo Rizoff, have gone to sleep and they're talking their heads off. For 55 years now, each chattering brother has babbled and gabbled all night to the other. Uh, we've talked about laws and they've talked about gods and they've talked about paws and they've talked about flaws. They've talked a lot about old Santa Claus. And the reason I'm telling you this is because you should take up the sport. It's fine for your job. It's funny to listen to people talk in their sleep. I think my Vasper puppies in my sleep. Do you walk in your sleep? I had a report. Some interesting news of the popular sport. Near Finnegan Fen, there's a sleepwalking group who not only walks, but walks a hula hoop. Now, every night they go miles while they walk with such a length. 
they have to keep eating to keep up their strength. So every so often, one puts down his hoop and starts hoop, stops hooping and does a quick snooping for soup. That's why they're known as the hoop soup noop group. Snoop group. The hoop snoop hoop. Hoop soup snoop group. Sleepwalking too are the curious craddles who sleepwalk on hills with assorted sized candles. The craddles walk nightly in slumbering peace in spite of slight burns in the hot, from the hot dripping grease. The craddles wear candles because they walk far and if they wake up they want to see where they are. It's a good idea. I don't know about the candle part but maybe a flashlight. I was thinking about a flashlight. Yeah. But this book was written. You can well, get those headlamps book? that you take, like yeah, camping. you can now. But back in nineteen sixty-two, uh, flashlights were a thing, but they were they're bad. They didn't last very long. They had big double C batteries and things. Do you remember the ones that had that yeah. big? Yeah, battery? the big square battery. We were just yeah. talking and the and the sort of the headlight on it. Yeah. Yeah, they lasted all eight eight minutes. Yeah. Now the news has arrived from the Valley of Vale, where Chippendale Muff has bitten his tail, which he does every night before shutting his eyes. Each nipping sounds sen such nipping sounds silly, but it's really it's wise. He has no alarm clock, so this is the way he makes sure they wake up at the right time of day. His tail is so long he can't feel any pain till the nip makes his trip from up to his brain. In exactly eight hours, the Chippendale Muff will at last feel a bite and yell up, oh, ouch, and wake up. <laughs> Ow. I guess my finger's not long enough. No. <laughs> I woke up right away. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. J. Markle Crocs have gone to their <laughs> have gone to bed near their town of Fort Knox. By th that, by the way, is the finest of clocks. I'm not at all sure that I quite understand just how the thing works with that one extra hand, but I do know this clock has very slight, it does one very slight trick. It doesn't tick tock, it goes talk tick. So with the ticks in its talker and the talks in its ticker, it saves some time and the sleepers sleep quicker. Would you like to sleep quicker so that you had more day? Yeah. yeah. That's how I know when I'm not depressed, when I want to be awake more than I want to be asleep. Yeah. The night, what a fine night for sleeping from all that I hear. It's the best night for sleeping in, in many a year. And even the sleep of the Zickelback Motel, where people don't usually sleep so well. The beds are like rocks, and everyone knows. The sheets are too short, and they don't cover your toes. So, if people are actually sleeping in there, it's a great night for sleeping. It must be in the air. How do people keep going there if they have rock beds and short sheets? Better than having rock sheets and short beds, I suppose. True. It's a great night for sore snores. I must. I just had a report that some of the boys are in top. It's a great night for snores. I just had a report of some boys who are tops in the sport. The snoriest snorers in the Oliver Fairland are the Snorter McPhail and the Snore. Are you saying I snore? I'm not saying anything. No, your finger. Here, let's see. I just want to see if I read this. What is this book called? It's called The Sleep Book. It's called Confused Tazzy. Now, stop distracting me. The snoriest of snorers in all the Fairland are the Snorter McPhail. Fail and the snore, a snort band. The band can snore Dixie or Old Swanee River so loud it'll make four, 40 elephants shiver. The loudest of all boys is the McPhail. He snores with his head in a three gallon pail. Their snore is in a cave 20 miles out of town. If they snored in a closet, they'd snore the town down. I was trying to concentrate and you're just doing that. Now I can see. <laughs> Do you know who's asleep out in Fusa Laguna? Two very nice Fusa Laguna Babuna. 
They've added them to our Who's Asleep count, which has grown to a really amazing amount, exactly 8,808 creatures are sleeping. Now, isn't that great? That's a, that's a lot. That is a lot. Of. And Jed, in his bed, a bed of a Jed is the softest of beds in the world, it is said. It makes it from pom-poms he grows on his head, and he's sleeping right now on the softest of fluff, completely exhausted from growing the stuff. That would be pretty wonderful. Hey. So exhausted from all that work, and then you have this really fluffy thing that you made yourself to sleep in. be awesome. I want a puppy. No puppy. The new... The no fluffy bed. Nah, maybe. I'm not sure. The news has come from this district of Doft. We're oft, too oft are asleep, and are sleeping in a loft. Now, how are they able to sleep off the ground? I'll tell you. I weighed one last week, and I found an oft is so light, he weighs minus one pound. That's pretty light. Uh, no kidding. Yeah. Minus one pound. Oh, my gosh. The moose is asleep, he's dreaming of moose drinks. A goose is asleep, and he's dreaming of goose drinks. And well and good when a moose dreams of moose juice, but there's nothing goes wrong if a goose dreams of goose juice. But it isn't so good if a moose and a goose start dreaming they're drinking each one's juice. The moose juice is not goose juice, and the juice is for moose. And then ju goose juice is not moose juice, it's a juice for the goose. So when a moose gets a mouthful of juices of mooses and the moose gets a mouthful of juices of gooses, then it's fall out of their bed screaming and screams. So I'm warning you now, uh, don't drink in your dreams. It's a bad idea. Not while you're sleeping. Yeah. Don't drink while you're sleeping. Don't drink and yawn. Hmm? Don't drink and yawn. Correct. Speaking of dreaming, I think you should note the Bubble Tub Club is now dreaming afloat. Every night they go dreaming from Bumble Tub Creek, except for one night or every third or fourth week, when they stop for repairs because the bubble tubs leak. But tonight they're afloat, full of dreams and full of bliss. And that's why I'm bothering to tell you all this. At the fork in the road, in the Vale of Vad, a five-foot weary salesman has laid down his load. All day they've raced around in the heat at top speeds, unsuccessfully trying to sell this or zoop seeds, which nobody wants and nobody needs. Tomorrow will come, they'll go back to their chore. They'll start on the road, zipper zoofing once more. But tonight they've forgotten their feet are so sore. And that's what wonderful nighttime is for. Everywhere creatures have shut off their voices, they've gone to bed in the beds of their choices. They're sleeping in bushes, they're sleeping in crannies, some on their some stomachs and some on their fannies. They're perfectly, perfectly peacefully sleeping in comfortable holes, some even on soft tough barbell shop poles. A number of sleepers has now passed the millions, and the number of sleepers is now in the billions. Everybody looks so peaceful. They are. They're sleeping on steps and on strings and on floors and mailbox and ships and keyholes of doors. Every worm on a fish hook is safe for the night. Every fish in the sea is too sleepy to bite. Every whale in the ocean has turned off his spout. Every light before here and far foodle is out. Now, adding things up, the way beyond billions, our sleep score is now up to the zillions. Ninety-nine zillion, nine trillion and two creatures are sleeping. And how about you? Not yet. Then put out your light. The number will be ninety nine zillion nine trillion and three. That's 
Miss Grifter turned the light out. Good night. What it says we have to turn this light on then too. Oh, lean way forward. Whoop. There we go. Whoop. The camera's out. So there we go. We'll sing the rest in the night time there. So it's time to go to sleep. Oh, it's kind of spooky, eh? A little bit. It's very spooky. We could do this. You know what we could do? We could go like this. And go. <laughs> go to sleep. It's oh, time to go to people sleep. People are going to have a hard time Whoa. sleeping now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, everybody. This is kind of cool at nighttime. I couldn't read the book, though, if we no. did it like that. What is the book called? Uh, All from a Bug Yawn. That's right. All from one little bug yawn. Uh-oh. Mm. There you go. I'm really tired, so I think what we'll do is we'll finish this and I'll go, oh, we have to eat our supper first and then I'm going to brush my teeth I'm going to go to bed. That's it. I just did it backwards. And Usually I'll have supper and then we'll read a book and then I'll brush my teeth and go to bed. But tonight I'm reading a book then I'm going to have supper and then I'm going to brush my teeth and then I'm going to go to bed. Because you don't want to do, you don't want to read a book and then brush your teeth and then go to bed and then have supper because that no, would be very weird. Idea. That'd be kind of weird. So have yourself a really good night. I feel like I'm, my picture is blurry. Oh, I know it because it can't focus on. I'm going to close it and then open it and see what happens. There we go. Oh, it's having trouble focusing because there's no light. <laughs> um, maybe turn the light on, Miss Christy. There we go. There we go. Nah. Oh, it's not a monster. It's Miss Christy saying no puppies. No puppies. No puppies. <laughs> There you go, everybody. I hope everybody had a really good uh, time reading that book. It was hard for me to read that book today. I was a little bit, uh, I couldn't get my brain working. I may need to wake up more than five minutes before I have to read. Maybe that would be a good idea, too. I can still feel the cat vibrating on my leg there. Nah, so there you go. Good night, everybody. Have yourself a really good day tomorrow. Please do uh, have a day that you're proud of and do the best you can in the moment that you're given. That's all we want you to try to do. And remember, didn't you sleep before the show? I did sleep before I, uh, the show, but I didn't have enough sleep. It was a nap. I need a sleep sleep. That's what I need. That's what Albert was asking. Yeah, that's it. So remember, in a world where you can choose to be anything, please always choose to be kind. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Have yourself a really good night. And what else are we going to say? Anything? Do I have anything to promote? Nothing really. We're trying to figure out what we should do with the uh, thousandth book. And I was thinking we could do um, another Zoom meeting. Or we. how about if we recorded one where I was reading in a park and you guys could all come and visit? Maybe that would be a cool idea. I think that'd be pretty cool. That'd be a cool idea. We could do that for my birthday, maybe. Yeah. That's cool. So you won't be on your thousandth book. No, we day. can't do our thousandth book on that day. Thousandth is a hard word to say. Thousandth. <laughs> thousandth. 999 and then the next one for sure <laughs> anyways i'm gonna keep talking unless we end the show so here we go good night all my friends good night good night all my friends good night may your dreams be cheery and your dreams be bright good night all my friends good night sleep tight all my friends sleep tight sleep tight all my friends sleep tight may your dreams be so silly tell the morning light good night all my friends good night lots of love from miss christy and i and I'm too tired to even ask for a puppy. But I want a puppy. No puppies. She said maybe. <laughs> <laughs>